This is the complete and only guide you will need for deep mob learning. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the mod from start to finish. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to need to do, as this is basically an automated mob farm, is we are going to need to make soot covered redstone. How do we make that? Well, we're just simply going to get our redstone, come onto a block of coal, and oh, I'm in creative. But you can see here, um, we've got some soot covered redstone. You just left click it on coal. It won't break the coal. That's because I'm in creative here. And you can just keep click, 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 clicking and getting more and more soot covered redstone. The next thing you want to make are some soot covered plates, which is this basically obsidian with soot covered redstone. And then you want to make this item here, a deep learner. So what we can do with a deep learner is if I right click it, we can go into this UI here and it's got four slots. Let's say you want to make a zombie farm. And in fact, for the entirety of this tutorial, I will be using zombies as an example. I am then going to make a zombie data model. You can see here, there's loads of different data models I can make. And if I look at the recipe, I can make a blank data model, which is really easy to make here with soot covered redstone again, and kind of the, the main item from the mob. So for zombies, it's rotten flesh. For skeletons, it's bones. For creepers, it's um, gunpowder. Quite obvious, right? And we can see there's lots of different ones we can make. So as I said, we're using zombies. If I shift over this, you can see it says tier faulty. Data collected, zero out of six. Data per kill, one. What this basically means is we need to kill six zombies to actually get it into a working data model. So I'm going to right click on my deep learner and I'm going to click the zombie data model and drag it into these four slots. And you, you can have multiple in here at once, by the way. That's absolutely fine. And again, we can see in here, it says defeat six more zombies to reach basic. So all I now need to do is spawn some zombies or, you know, go out and kill some zombies and you must get the killing blow. So I've just killed three of them. If I go back into my deep learner, you can see it says defeat three more zombies. And in here we now have um, data collected three out of six. What I can also do is put it in my offhand. Where'd it go? I think I deleted it. OK, well, I'm going to put this back in my offhand. I'm going to use this upgraded one now, where you can see we need, um, we've got 738 out of 900. No, in fact, no, I'm going to use the basic one. I'm going to use the basic one. I want to show you guys this properly. There we go. When it is in your offhand, you can actually see on the top left of my screen here, can you see it says faulty model? Um, six left to go, five left to go, four left to go. And like I said earlier, you must get the killing blow for these to work. And when I kill the last one, you can now see it says the data model has reached the basic tier. So now when I go and look at it, what we're going to see is it's now a basic tier. And I need to defeat 12 more zombies to reach advanced. You may be wondering, well, what's the difference between each tier? Well, if we use, see in JEI here, we have pristine zombie matter. If I push U on my data model, you can see that advanced has 11%, superior 24%, self-aware 42%, and basic is 5%. Those are the chances in the simulation that we're going to get this pristine matter. So how are we going to use all of this now that we've got a working data model? Well, I'm going to take it out, put it into my inventory, and then we're going to build this here, a simulation chamber. So when I go into the simulation chamber, what you'll see is that I've got some polymer clay in the top. What you need is polymer clay to run your simulations. And this again is very easy to make. We're then going to get our basic zombie data model. I'm going to put it in the top left slot up here. And you're going to see a percentage is running in the bottom right hand corner of the UI. This is it running a simulation. Every time it gets to 100%, it will then start a new one. And on a basic model, it has a 5% chance to get a piece of pristine. You know, and on the higher models, higher and higher. What you can see here is that we have a 100% chance to get overworldy in matter. And if I show you the different ones, can you see that on zombie it says overworldian um, and does on all of these? And then on blaze, it's hellish, ghast, it's hellish, with a skeleton, hellish, ender dragon, and, and wither, and endermen are extraterrestrial. Now that determines what kind of matter we will get. 
So from Overworldian, we're going to get Overworldian Matter, Hellish for Hellish, and Extraterrestrial for Extraterrestrial. And they are all 100% drop chance. The specific mob determines the pristine matter you get, and the chance is based on the tier. What can we do with these matters? Well, Overworldian can be used to transmute things. So you can see I can put it with some coal to get gunpowder, and things like that. The same with Hellish. I can use sugar and spider's eye with two hellish matter to get some gas tears. And it's really useful for things like that. The pristine matter is used in another machine I'm going to show you shortly. So now you're probably wondering, okay, well, how do I upgrade my data model? Well, it's actually going to upgrade automatically in here. Can you see in here it says data collected 6 out of 48 and data per kill 4? Well, when you automate it in here... Oh, there we go. It's gone up from six to seven. Every simulation that is run will add one more to the data collected. So it means that I am going to actually have to do, after this next run, you're going to see in a second, it's going to go up to, there we go, eight. And now I need to do it 40 more times to get to 48 out of 48. At 48, it will then go up to this one, advanced, where I now need 300 data collected. Now, if you're thinking, gosh, that'll take a really long time. Well, we can do it even quicker. You can see at basic, it says data per kill, four. And then at advanced, it says data per kill, ten. What this means is that if I kill a zombie, so remember here, we've got 31 out of 300. If I put this in my deep learner and I kill a zombie, I've actually just gained another ten data collected because data per killer advanced is 10 so rather than waiting for 10 whole simulations if i want i could just kill them manually and upgrade it a lot quicker you can then see at um where is it at superior it needs 900 but i get 18 per kill it will still be one per simulation however and again the higher the data model the higher the chance we get um, pristine matter when we run these simulations and they will go into this slot here what do we do with our pristine matter well we put them into here a loot fabricator so let's say i'm using my pristine zombie matter what you can see here is that it goes in and i can choose between carrots iron ingots rotten flesh or potato if i click iron ingots it's going to run up and use one matter and it will make 16 iron ingots and you can see here for a pristine spider i've got the option between spider eye string and cobweb on a wither i can actually do a never star on slime it's of course going to give you slime every time you get pristine matter blaze you can choose between sulfur or blaze rods and it will depend what mods you have installed like sulfur is from thermal foundation and deep mob learning will add that option in because of the loot table that we have on blazes and that is how we use those. So that's how you're basically going to get your mob farm and your loot farm from the simulation chamber and loot fabricator. Just don't forget to make sure you're adding power into here um, and also polymer. Oh, and one other thing, you have to input the items at the top. So the polymer clay has to go in at the top. Everything else can come in from any side. Same with the loot fabricator. The next thing, if you're thinking, how can I do this even quicker? Well, we have trial keystones here. This is, um, you don't have to use this. You can if you want. It's a bit of fun. So basically, a trial keystone, again, pretty simple to make. When we go into here, you can add in a key. And this is it here, the trial key, uh, made pretty simply, as you can see. So if I get a trial key, you can see it needs, um, the key is not currently attuned, and the available attunements, you know, zombie, enderman, skeleton, etc. So what I need to do is I go into my deep learner, and I insert a data model. Let's say I'm going to use the skeleton data model. Now, the next mob I kill, so if I put a zombie in here as well, the next mob I kill will attune the key, but only if they're in the deep learner. So if I kill a zombie, while it's in my deep learner, you will now see the key is attuned to zombie. However, if I did not have the zombie data model inside my deep learner here, then it wouldn't have attuned the key. So I can't take it out and kill a zombie, that nothing will happen. Then I go into my trial keystone. I put the trial key in. Oh, God, it's gone. Maybe it's because I've been creative. I'm having some issues today. I put the trial key in. Why is it deleting it? There we go. It's because I was in creative and I was pressing it outside the box. 
You can see sometimes you'll get an extra fix. On this one, we have Loot Hoarders. And you'll see that it's going to have two waves, and it's going to give me free pristine matter as a reward. The higher the tier, um, the higher the rewards and waves and affixes are. How do we get a higher tier? You simply use a more uh, a higher tier of data model when you attune your key. So if I killed a zombie while having a superior data model in here, then it would have been a superior key affix. I press start trial. Zombies will appear. You can see it says one, one out of two waves, four opponents to go. You kill them all. And then it will go on to the second wave in a few seconds. Next wave in five, four, three, etc. And one more to go. And there we go. We've done it. And then you'll see your, your reward is then here. There's my pristine matter at the keystone. I'm just going to open up the Deep Mob Learning book, which you can use, by the way. It's uh, Deep Mob. It's called, literally called Deep Mob Learning. Um, and you can make it with just some soot-covered redstone to make the guide. And one other thing that I haven't shown you in here, which we haven't seen, is glitches um, and also um, the affixes. So in Trials, affixes, there's speed, where the mobs are faster, empowered glitches, the glitches that appear will be stronger, regen, um, blaze invaders, you get blazes, knockback immunity, Thunder Dome, you'll get Thunder Creatures, and Loot Hoarders, where you'll get mini zombies. So sometimes you can get glitches in there. Um, and they look like these. So in the harder keystones, sometimes a glitch will appear. They're pretty dangerous mods. When you kill them, you get glitch hearts. What can we do with glitch hearts? Well, I'm going to tell you. So we get a corrupted glitch heart. Left click Obsidian while holding a corrupted glitch heart. Glitch clart, oh my gosh, um, to get free unstable glitch fragments, which are these. What do you do with them? Well, you throw them in some water with lapis and gold, and you'll then get a glitch-infused ingot, which can be made into glitch-infused gear. Basically, um, you get some bonus when if you're wearing this gear when doing the Keystone Trials. You get an 18% chance to drop two pristine matter when a data model gains data, which you will be generally gaining data um, in your Deep Learner while doing the trial. And you get flight and immunity against full damage. Um, and that's what you get on the gear. There's also a sword, a glitch-infused sword. Um, the data gained from the demise of a mob is doubled. When data is gained, there is also a small chance that the sword will get a permanent damage increase. And as you can see here, the damage can go pretty high on this. So it is actually a really good sword. So doing these glitch um, keys, sorry, these trial keystones with the idea that you're then going to try and eventually get two glitch ingots to make the sword is actually a really good way of getting a really quite powerful sword fairly easily that's not too late into endgame if you do have this mob installed. And that is it, everyone. That is everything you need to know about deep mob learning. I hope this guide was really useful for you. If you want some more bite-sized deep mob learning guides, check out the playlist on the screen. And do check out the playlists on my channel, as my goal on this channel is actually to cover every single mod and mod pack eventually in Minecraft for you guys. So please do leave a like. Let me know in the comments below if you liked it. And um, don't forget, of course, to subscribe.